All right, uh, Shalom. Let me verify that. Yeah, okay. All right, Shalom. Kalayim la Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. Who rule in peace well. Must peace, love, and salutations. The brothers doing this work in truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is the brother Batak back again through the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, it be edifying. Um, this the title of this lesson is going to be called uh, Nothing new is under the sun there's nothing new under the sun slash ballista um and uh, this is coming straight from the scriptures and i'm a uh, uh lord willing this this lesson be edifying so without further ado let's get right into it it's ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 it says the thing that hath been is now also i'm sorry the thing that hath been it is what it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So the reason why I got that is because of this device that I'm going to go over in this lesson. Is can we compare compare to the device that is existing that's going to use be used in this time to destroy Babylon, aka America. So let's read the NLT. It says history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before done before nothing new i'm sorry nothing under the sun is truly new because it's refreshed ultimately there's just that comes back in new forms if you will but it's the same concept okay so let's go to the book of ecclesiastes chapter 7 this is what i found the scripture um i was actually reading this this is the book of ecclesiastes 7 and 10 and 29 it says lo this only have i found that the most high hath made man upright but he have sought out many inventions. So when I looked up this word inventions, it took me to this Hebrew word, which is, I'm sorry, forgive me, it's a compound word. Chasha <clears throat> Bana. You know, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> uh, forgive me. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, Salah, it's Hashabawan. Hashabawan, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. But the word means a device invention. Now, when you go down here, it says engine. Let me see. It says a warlike machine. It says a warlike machine or metal, a, a man, man nation, nation, engine, invention. So, when you go down it, to the... um. Hebrew Chaldi lexicon. It says a warlike machine, invention, art devices. But we're going to focus on this paragraph right here. It says war, the warlike machines, especially for casting darts or stones, blah, 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 which in medieval Latin was used as a use for a ballista, proper, properly signifying a machine ingenuously constructed, hence from the French engineer or english engineer so let's go over that and um when i came across this this hebrew word it took me back to this scripture and when i looked into this scripture let's go to it this is the book of second chronicles chapter 26 verse 14 it says and and, and uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and habergeons and bow and bows and slings to cast stones verse 15 the point and he made in jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones with with all and his name spread far abroad for he was marvelously helped till he was strong let me see verse let's read the nlt and see what it says it says and he built construct and he built structures on the walls of Jerusalem designed by experts to protect those who shot arrows and hurled large stones from the towers and from the corner walls. His fame spread far and wide for Yahweh gave him a rough, mar, mar, I'm sorry, marvelous help and he became very powerful. So let's read. Let's go to the Hebrew word for that word. Engines. It's the same word. Um. Which when you go to the root of that word, 
which is, uh, forgive me from mistake, Khashab. Khashab, which means to think, plan, esteem, calculate, invent, and invention, to make judgment, imagine, count. To plan, blah, blah, blah. Let me see. To invent. There you go. For the sake of this lesson, we're using a definition that fits best of this lesson, which is to invent. Because that's what it is. It's an invention. Uh, okay. To be accounted, to be thought, be esteemed, to be computed, be reckoned, to be imputed, to think upon, consider, be mindful, to think, to do, devise, plan. So these these things was um created. It was invented. So when you go, which this is the same Hebrew word, when you go to Google and type in the ballista. I typed in King Uzziah created ballista. It says the earliest forms of ballista is is typically attributed to the Greeks of the fourth century BCE. Yet Second Chronicles twenty six fifteen describes the eighth century BCE King Uzziah overseeing the construction in Jerusalem of engines invented by skillful men to be on the towers and upon the corners where to shoot arrows. So. According to the Bible, the first time these things was in, was um vented was you know by King Uzziah, but but that could be there could be other um history that goes farther back than that. But for the sake of this lesson, we're using this scripture, and Lord willing, this lesson be edifying. I'm not sure when the first ballista was actually created, but the purpose of it was to um to launch rocks like stones or arrows or whatever you could launch you know so of course Esau want to attribute everything to him because he was blessed with the sword so but you know um we're not exactly sure if you know King Uzziah was the first one to create the ballista but according to the scriptures it is you know it just matches up with the lesson so we're just going to go with that um as it, you know, Google says it was attributed to the Greeks, which are Edomites, which makes sense because, you know, they was blessed with the sword. So it, it'll make sense if they was the first ones to create su such a device because, you know, they was blessed with the sword. So but the fact that it's actually in the scriptures is just, you know, more believable. I'm not sure about that history, but but for the sake of this lesson, Lord willing to be edifying, you know, the point gets there. It says, but did the Romans make the make the ballista? It says originally developed by the Greeks, the Romans refined the design of the ballista further, making it much more mobile, efficient, and accurate. Roman ballista ballista were typically made of wood and of loops, tangled and twisted animal sunins of hair, and worked in a similar way to spring. So which let me see alexander the great macedonian ballistas were instrumental in his military campaign through western asia and northeast northeast africa so the exact origin of this weapon um is not known i have to do more um research on it who was actually the first one to invent it it said it the greeks um But it's in the scriptures also. So we're going to um, compare that to what is to Well, actually, I'm sorry. Let's go back. Let me see. Let's see what this. We already covered what it's for. Ballista function. It says a ballista is a range, a range seize engine that would shoot spears, wooden, some sharpened wooden stakes, or rocks at enemy forces or castles. It worked by using two long arms to cause ten, um, tension of rope connected to a bowstring. When released, the tension would launch the projectile at the target. Now, the modern day ballista is the missiles because it just looks like a, a, a portable missile <laughs> but you know it's just a little dated you know like the scripture says there's nothing new in under the sun Russian mobile
Russian mobile missile miss, uh, missile launcher. So as you can see, this is the RT RT two PM two Topo M, which are what Mo mobile missile defenses. I'm sorry, mobile missile systems. These these are um, basically the modern day um, ballistas. It's just more advanced, but it's the same thing. They do the same. They shoot the same. They shoot the same purpose. It's like a it's like a big bow, bow big bow and arrow. The silo is the bows, and the arrows are the actual missile. Like the apostles always bring out. There was a movie that came out uh, some times back called Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow. Here it is. Okay, it says Air Force pilots Vic, blah 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 blah, are sent on an overnight topo secret mission with two nuclear, two nuclear weapons abroad. They aboard their aircraft, but after they are in the air, Deacons, Deacons, creates the plan. He attempts to kill Hell, and they then steal the weapons. With the intent of selling them to terrorists, however, Hell, su Hell su uh, survives the crash and meets up with Park Ranger Terry, Kara Michael. Together, Hell and Terry attempt to thwart Deacon's plan. So basically, it's about a stolen nuclear missile. Broken Arrow is a code phrase that refers to an accidental event that involves nuclear missiles, warheads, or components that does not create that does not create a risk to nuclear war these include accidental or un un unexplained nuclear explosion so that's what it is so this movie was about um nuclear missiles um so this day these the, these nuclear missiles are the modern day ballistas which are used to launch missiles so we're going to get a couple of precepts uh, concerning the destruction um, uh, there's a scripture coming in my head about archers because that's how they wolves were fought with bows and arrows and this is going to be fought with bow and arrow too second edges chapter 16 this is Second Edges chapter 16. I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, May, may any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood, or may, may any one quench the fire and stubble when it beginneth to burn. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer, which is what? Those missiles. Once those missiles are launched, you're not going to be able to turn them back. That's what these, these, these um, questions are asking you. Are you going to be able to stop what's coming? No, you can't stop it because the Lord is bringing it. It says the mighty Lord sendeth the plagues and who is he that can drive them away? Exactly. And those missiles, those thermonuclear missiles, those modern day ballistas, they are the, um, they are the judgment of Yahweh Shemel Shah. They are that plague that the Lord is sending upon Edom to destroy him. He's going out by fire. This is the book of Zechariah 14 and 12. This is how he's going to go out. And there should, and this shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord was smite. That word means smite means to kill all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So they're gonna literally perish, man. You know, their flesh is gonna be eaten up, consumed, decayed, corroded, and it's gonna be done by fire. So that's the judgment of Esau. Malachi 4 and 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And those nuclear ballistic. Oh, I, I just thought of that. You know, they actually call them ballistic. Ballistic missile. Let me see what the word ballistic means. Because it's, it's similar to ballistic. But ballista. <laughs> Okay, the word ballistic. Let me see. 
Um, and this is, um, let me see, I didn't think of the look, look up this word, ballistic. It sounds even familiar. Ballistic missile says a, a, a rocket propeller self-guided strategic weapon system that allows a ballistic trajectory to, to, uh, develop a payload from its launch site to a predetermined target, which sounds just like a ballista. Ballistic missiles can carry conventional high explosives as well as chemical, biological, or nuclear munitions. So it's the same thing, it's just more advanced. In the old days, let me see the ballistic uh, meaning. What's the ballistic meaning? Ballistic means extremely and unusually suddenly excited, upset, or angry hollers. Wild. He went ballistic. Let me type in ballistic missile meaning. Let me see. Why is it called a ballistic missile? Ballistic missiles, long-range ballistic missiles, enter, entered American military service during the late 1950s. They are called ballistic because they, because like the shell from a gun, they retreat or they receive a brief but powerful init initial impetus from a rocket motor, then follow an unpowered ballistic trajectory after launching. Let's look at the word ballista, ballistic, and ballista. It says, and they're similar. It says, an ancient military engine, often in the form of a crossbow, for hurling large missiles. <laughs> so these words are very similar. Okay, it says the ballista from left, from Greek ballistra and that for it means to throw. Sometimes mm, called boat thrower was an ancient missile weapon that launched either bolts or stones at a direct target. So as you can see, it's the same thing, it's the same concept. Ballistics is an ancient war machine used for throwing missiles, late 14th century, from Latin ballista, military machine for hurling stones, from Greek ballistis, from Berlin, from Berlin, to throw, to throw so as to hit, to put, place, lay, to throw. Ballistic. Let me see what that says. Pertaining to construction and use of throwing objects. Thrown objects. Ultimately from Greek balling to throw. So it's the same. It's 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 the same thing. To throw each of rockets or missiles. Ones that are guided while under propulsion. But fall freely. Ballistic missiles are tested from 1954. They obtain extreme heights. Hence uh, figurative expression. Go ballistic become irrationally anger so the word ballistic and ballista are similar because they mean the same thing so that right there shows why that that also proves that these these missiles or ballistas with these modern day nuclear missiles come from the ballistas or are similar to the ballistas which is a weapon of the same it's the same shit it's the same thing man you know and this let me get some more precepts
already got Malachi. I'm, I'm looking for something. Here it is. This is the book of uh, Revelation chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, which Wormwood uh, goes back to the word, uh, well, actually, the word Chernobyl goes back to Wormwood, which is, Wormwood is radiation. It says, And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, which is what radiated, you know, unsafe to eat or consume and many people men died of the waters because they were bitter because it was warm it was radiation and that star is talking about the nuclear missiles the destruction it says and the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars as and so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for the for the third part of it and the night likewise, and behold, and heard, and I beheld, I'm sorry, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying unto a, with a loud voice, woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound, because what, that woe, 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 is World War One, World War Two, and World War Three, which is World War Three is going to be the end, going to be the end all, be all of Esau. Because the third part of anything is referring to Esau. Because he's the third. There are three classifications of men. The sons of God, which is talking about the Israelites. The sons of men is the heathen outside of Esau. And the sons of the wicked, which is Esau. He's, he, that's him. That's the category that he falls in. The third part of men. So ut utterly, Esau is going to be completely destroyed by the, the great destruction that Yahweh Hashem is bringing upon him. This is the book of Revelations. I'm sorry, is it, is it, this, this chapter is also, I'm looking for something, hold on, here it is, the book of Revelation chapter 11, I'm going to start at 11, it says, and after three days and a half, which represents the time period from when we got over here to now, well, which to, to 1969, 1970, which was a period of 350 years, starting at 1969, I mean, I'm sorry, 1619 um, up into 1969, 1970 was 350 years. And that's when the Israelites began to wake up. You know, that's when the rapper Abba Bivens, which we believe to be John the Baptist, uh, split from the commandment keepers and started teaching the Old and the New Testament um, and woke up the nation of Israel, you know. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem El Shai. It says, And they stood upon their feet, and, and great fear fell upon them which saw them, which is talking about the nation of Israel, rising up. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven, which is what? A, the chariots, in a cloud, in the, in the uh, I'm sorry, in the chariots, so called UFOs, and their enemies beheld them, so that the, the our enemy is going to see the deliverance of the nation of Israel. Verse 13, it says, In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, which is talking about America. That tenth part represents the ten FEMA regions, or the ten zip codes uh, of America. It says, And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, which is what com the word number seven represents completion. So, Everybody that's on this on in America is gonna die by those nukes, man. It says, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. So the elect are gonna be delivered first, then the destruction is gonna come. You know, so that's what these intercontinental ballistic missiles are going to do. They are gonna destroy Esau. They are gonna burn everything. This is the judgment from Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai upon the wicked, which is Esau. The sons of the wicked. Psalms 11 and 6. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone. Because what? That's the same way Sodom and Gomorrah went out. That's how America's going to go out. Because America is modern day Sodom and Egypt. It says, and a horrible tempest, which means a what? A very strong wind. This shall be the portion of their cup. And that's going to come in the form of those missiles. That's why the Lord created them. He gave them the technology to create 
these missiles, but a little bit more advanced. Psalms 11 and 6, it says he will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds, burning sulfur, which is brimstone. And it is highly flammable. If I'm not mistaken, let me um, look that up. Let me um, fact check that real quick. Sulfur. Is flammable? I believe it is. Yeah, yeah. Very, it says molten sulfur is a flammable solid and a fire and explosion risk above 450 blah 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 sulfur is a combustible solid use water spray to fight fires and keep fire ex exposed container blah 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 basically yeah does sulfur ignite easily sulfur does suspend it in air it ignites easily so can sulfur cause explosion sulfur, sulfur is combustible and it is an explosion hazard that's what's gonna happen what is brimstone Probably you're just gonna say it's sulfur. Yep, it says sulfur. So brimstone is sulfur. And it's gonna come in the form of missiles. Let me see if I can find another song scripture. So this is the book of um Genesis 19 and 10. Well, you know what? That's what the Lord did to um That's what the Lord did to um Sodom. Um, I actually read this Deuteronomy 29 and 23. It says, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and sulf and, and salt and burning, that it is not sown nor beareth, nor any grass groweth there therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Atma and Zoboyim, which Yahweh overthrew in his anger and his wrath. So that same thing is going to happen to America. It's going to be overthrown with fire and brimstone. Um, Ezekiel 38 and 22 says, And I will plead, and I will plead against them with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. That's what's going to happen to Esau. This is a prophecy that has yet to happen. So this is going to happen to the wicked. Which is Esau Edom. This whole chapter has not yet happened, come to full fruition. You know, because it ends in the destruction of of America and the destruction of the nation of Israel, the land of Israel. Forgive me. Let's type in brimstone again. So, let's see. Let's bear with me. Revelations um, 14 and 10. I'm going to start at 9. It says, The third angel and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast or his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, which is righteous anger. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. Those are two things that if you mix together, it's a problem. According to Esau and according to Google, it says in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. So Esau know what's going to happen to him. You know, the prophets and the men of the Lord have been telling them the Lord is going to blow y'all blast from the blast y'all. man. You know, that's the judgment that's coming upon you devils for all the things that you've done. This is the book of um, Job four and nine. It says by the blast of the most high, they perish. And by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. That's the judgment of the wicked. 
your heavenly father, Yahweh was going to literally bless y'all. Let's see, y'all. Is there a significant keep a word in there? Uh, the word wind is in there. Let's read the NLT, Job 4 and 9. It says, a breath from the Most High destroys them. They vanish in a blast of his anger. Right, so that's going to come in the form of those missiles and in the form of the, the chariots because the chariots are going to get busy too. So by that, is Esau going to be blasted? He's going to be consumed with fire. Um. So, well... A quick recap of this lesson. Um, the word ballista and ballistic are the same. They're, but they're similar. The ballistic is an old term for um, basically a catapult. Not a catapult, but a, a war machine used to launch things like rocks. And also uh, maybe stakes and uh, maybe giant arrows. I think arrows also. So this is just a quick comparison of the ballista of old times and the ballista of this time. The ballistic of, of this time, which they're sim similar and one and the same because they're basically the same thing, same weapon, same device, same machine used for the same thing. But in our time, it's going to be used to destroy America and um, to destroy the land of Israel by fire. So this was just a quick comparison to the spirit, letting you know that there's nothing new under the sun. Let's let's end it off on that. We started with that. We're going to end with it. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. It says the thing that hath been, which is what the ballistas in this case for this lesson, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Because ultimately the Lord put the spirit on them to create it back then. And he put the spirit on them, the scientists to create those nuclear missiles. Which are the same thing, just more advanced and used. And they're used in fire this time. And I'm pretty sure back then they used fire too. Because they could have uh, lit the um, lit the um, rocks on fire. Or, you know, possibly, you know, I'm, I'm just speculating. Um, uh, I'm just speaking as a man. So it's it's possible they could have lit the um the, the rocks and the arrows on fire like they do. They showed you in certain movie period pieces how they light the arrows and um and then launch them. So it's the same thing, just more advanced. This is and there is no new thing under the sun. So the Lord put the spirit on them to create those you know devices, but they're gonna be a lot more advanced and bit used for a bigger purpose to destroy a whole landmass. You know, called America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16, it says, For behold, behold, I have created the smith, which are what? Those scientists that created those missiles that blow up the coals and the fire. That what creates their, their, uh, that movie Oppenheimer came out recently. They was the ones that was the, the ones that created those missiles, um, it says, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy, which is what? The Lord gave them the technology to create these missiles in order to destroy themselves. And it's going to be brought by fire. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were those, those two bombs was dropped, and it set off a new, a new, uh, if you will, a new arms race, if you will. Everybody needed to get that technology, and now everybody has it. You know, certain nations have it. And that's how America is going to be destroyed because Russia is the one the Lord is going to use to bring that destroying wind upon this world to lay it flat. Jerusalem, I'm sorry, Jeremiah <laughs> chapter 51 verse 1. Thus said Yahweh, behold, I will rise, raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. So that's what's going, what those missiles are going to bring. 
those modern day ballistas or ballistic missiles are going to actually do. They're going to be thrown <laughs> from the silos to the other side of the world using a propulsion system, which is um those, the, you know, the rocket itself. And once that rocket is done getting it to where it needs to go, those those warheads are going to come out and they're going to land where they need to land. So with that, Lord willing, this, this lesson was edifying. So when you see that there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, it happened back then and it's happening now. And that's how America's going to be destroyed. So with that, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I'm going to close out by giving all praises, praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim, Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone.